welcome back to Tarot Tats and Tea. Before I start um, getting into the video that I want to create today, I just want to say a thank you. I had quite a surprise. I was getting prepared to create this video and setting everything up. And, you know, on the front page of our, our sort of our desktop of, of, of our YouTube ch uh, channel, there was a, 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 another video popped up and this lady was talking in with the most gentle voice. And um, I thought to myself, right, oh, sorry, I'm just turning on my salt lamp. I like that on. And, um, and I thought, oh, I'll just stop and listen to what she is saying. And she was talking about, um, you know, having a safe place, having a nice community, the, the positive um, aspects of it. And also talking about, you know, her overcoming her own sort of, uh, not negativities, but her own um, lack of confidence or maybe not too sure about um, what she was doing, you know, fear of negativity, a bit of self-doubt. And, you know, who, who is she to say that she's an authority on this? Well, uh, it was so interesting to listen to. And I was listening away and I was typing a response as um, as I was listening. I have a habit of doing that, of listening, watching and listening, and in the comments, whilst I'm watching and listening, responding as the video progresses. When all of a sudden I heard my own channel called out and my own name. So I just want to say a massive thank you to Karen of um, Finding Sanctuary for such a lovely um, comment about my channel and about how you have found joining me on my journeys, whether it's through ancestral um, work or anything else. I really was astounded, shocked, taken aback, but so humbled. It was a bit of a wake up call to me. Um, and highlighted just how much of an influence that we can have on people's lives when we are on platforms such as YouTube. You know, sometimes we sit here in our own little bubble and we create our content for people that want to follow, want to watch, want to listen, not realising the impact that it can have on some people and some people's lives. And it is with that in mind that I will be even more um, aware of what I put out there being as positive as I can be. Also highlighting times when I am not feeling too positive but, um, and, and sharing because sometimes that sharing can be difficult if things aren't particularly going right in our lives. Well, do we want people to know that? Because at the end of the day, um, this is all goodness and light, but that's not real life. Real life is when we can share the good and the bad to, you know, to whatever level you feel comfortable with. I'm busy right now, sitting here, getting prepared to do a VR to somebody I follow um, here in the YouTube community, and that is Simon from the Hermit's Cave. In a minute, I'll be doing a response to his video on um, decks on my desk. But before I do that, I just want to say, I am, I, I, you know, I'm just so thankful. Karen, what you said was kind, was um, quite, quite astounding for me. I didn't feel that I had um, that much sort of, a, of an influence on, 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 on anybody. And to know that you've taken something positive from what I create has been well a, a, a real wonderful accolade and I thank you from the bottom of my heart and uh, like I said you know we share things and we, we do do um, keep it as positive as we can but like that if we have worries or concerns we do share that if we feel we're ready to that we understand as individuals here in our own little spaces that sometimes we can feel a little bit alone knowing that sometimes all we have to do is chat to our friends either in our community our neighbors and sometimes 
to the friends we have made here through um, TarotTube. I have made some lovely friends through TarotTube, although we've not met in person. They are friends that there's a group of us that meet every now and again. We don't live in each other's ear, but we just meet up now and again and create a sort of a collaborative video. But they are people who I have put in a chat before today. Can you just check out on this for me? Or I might have vented about something. And because you sort of develop a friendship that is akin to the friendships that we have in our in our lives outside of Tarot Tube, it's quite remarkable. And it just goes to show you how small a world it is. Karen, you're coming all the way from Australia. And as you mentioned, I'm here in Ireland. And, you know, I'm talking to people across the, across the globe. And for me, that's something that's quite phenomenal. But the fact that you expressed uh, the influence that, that a person's channel can have on somebody and how it can make people feel is, is uh, quite remarkable. And Karen, again, uh, I know I've, I've, I'm repeating myself, but thank you. you. You gave me a lot of food for thought. You made me feel extremely humble, but also extremely thankful that I am fortunate enough to be in this position. Um, I had a had to retire very early. I was uh, in my late forties when I when I finished work in early fifties when I finally retired, and that was through um, after quite um quite a traumatic battle with cancer, and um, unfortunately I was not deemed fit to return to work. I'm awaiting more um, a, a visit to oncology next week because um, cancer cells have risen in my yearly blood tests. So um, positivity sent this way would be very much appreciated. But I just want to thank all of you. Um, I'm, I'm able to be here because I retired early. Um, it wasn't a choice to retire, it was a choice that was made due to my own ill health. And as such, I can spend time doing this. But it's spending time doing this sort of thing where I don't think we're always fully aware as to the impact that our words, our activities can have on people. The fact that it's been a positive impact is brilliant and um, I hope that that continues. Um, so. Without further ado, I'm going to get on with this now because it's a VR I enjoyed watching, Simon. Thank you very much. And um, I'm going to start now. Um, Karen, your channel, Finding Sanctuary, I'm going to be putting a link on here on my channel and um, I've subscribed to yours. Um, so it's nice to meet you and um, I look forward to uh, catching up with you at some point. Thank you so much. Right, what desk, what desks? What decks do I have on my desk and why? Now, I'm just going to move my water over here. Oh, it's amazing how talking the way we do creates such a thirst. Now, I have two um, boxes, as, as you know, um, containers here with decks in. Now I'm going to go through why they're on my desk and which ones I'm working with. These are the ones I'm currently working with along with these two oracle decks and um, those of you that are following the, the channel will know why I'm using the, these particular decks. Actually there's two that I haven't actually mentioned on the um, project. That's the Ancestral Grimoire project because those I use quietly in the background for myself but I'll get there and show you. So, first of all, the one that's being used each time is the Universal Celtic Tarot. I'm using this because I'm doing the ancestral work and my roots are strongly Celtic, both Welsh and Irish roots. Um, this deck fits the bill. The images are nice and clear. The cards are lovely to read with. They do give quite the the um, the butt kicking if it's needed, but they're also very clear to understand. They add that little bit more with, through the imagery. 
But what I like about these, within the Ancestral Grimoire project, you don't necessarily read, say, the Seven of Swords as we would traditionally read it. We look at the image. What is that image telling us? You know, is there, is there a, a little bit of a green-eyed monster in us or in somebody else as to what we're doing? Um, who's trying to manipulate or uh, monopolise um, what's going on? But when it comes to ancestry, you know, dragons in the days of yore, you know, looking back and what's my ancestry here? Well, Welsh ancestry with dragons and witches and bards and wizards as we go along. It's There's so much to it. You read cards traditionally and pictorially, okay? So that's the Celtic Tarot, Universal Celtic Tarot, and that is created by Floriana Nativo and Christina Scagliotti. Come on, get in there. There we go. Now, when I was deciding on which decks I was going to use for this project, I picked out two tarot. The second one was Tarot of the Abyss by Anna Torian. Now, I chose this because of the deep, earthly, sort of earthy feel I get from it. It seems to me, it seems to scream out our roots, our origins, our ancestry to me. And there are a couple of cards here that I will show you that really helped influence that decision. The first of all, I love this fool. You know, when we set off on any journey, on any project we're doing, we're stepping into uncharted territories. We're thinking, oh, you know, am I right doing this? Am I right sharing it? Um, is it something that's going to benefit the community, benefit myself, or be of interest, if not benefit us, be of interest? Because it's something different, it's something new. And even um, if we've been reading tarot for as, for as long as we have, then we ask ourselves, well, you know, should, should, you know, have I got the qualifications to do this? As anybody has, absolutely anybody has. This is another one, the Knight of Wands in this deck. You know, that to me was like our ancestors holding us in the palms of their hands, guiding us along our uh, along the way. But rever the reverse as well, ourselves reaching out to the ancestors that follow us. You know, all these sort of images have... Um, a feeling of the past okay this is another one the wise one okay and I love the sketches of Anatorian I love the way this is a sort of a black and white deck because it seems I was never a black and white deck uh, person but it just feels right it feels in fact it feels quite beautiful um, here we go again. Now, the lover's card is so different. Look at that. And uh, that is definitely taking us back to our roots, you know, um, and loving the study, loving the work that we're putting into it and loving nature as well. You know, when we look back to our ancestors, we're looking at every aspect of our ancestors, what they did, how they did it. And, for you know, we can trace it back to where they, they would use herbs for remedies it was it, there was no relying on modern day doctors because there were no modern day doctors we had our herbalists we had our spiritualists we had well, and we still do in a modern version today but then that was life for all not just for the few that believe in what we do and how we go about our day this one sat so well with me that's me that you know now it's the nine of pentacles now we can look at our nine of pentacles and go well you know we're sitting back and enjoying what we've learned enjoying what we've created and we might not have created riches and you know plenty but what we have is our knowledge our wisdom our experience and as we can see this is a wise old woman you know who's taking care of nature watching her garden flourish and grow and that sat so well with me you know in my life um 
looking at my children at how they've grown into the most amazing adults, looking at my plant life, looking at nature, how I've really sort of gelled with nature and how I've brought nature into my everyday living. And this was the one that really sealed it for me and it's the Ten of Pentacles. Just look at that Ten of Pentacles reaching out this reaching above for help, reaching back in time for help, looking and speaking to our ancestors, the family tree or the tree of life. For me, because it's ancestral, I'm looking at it from the point of view of a family tree. The family at the bottom climbing those stairs or the roots reaching down to the family that went before us. It's all just so amazing. There are so many um, images in this one card that could take you into an absolute, um, you're going down a, a sort of a rabbit hole, so many different paths that can be taken through that one image. It's just stunningly beautiful. So that is why I could go further on with this deck. There are so many other, other um, cards. This one here, the death card, just look at that. You know, all about change, all about morphing from one season to the next, you know, looking back again at our, our our spirit guides our roots and and being at one with nature looking at the change of the seasons but looking at how change in our own lives can help us to grow and to grow in experience but to also grow as individuals not just experience but in our outlook in our ways so that's why I have the Tower of the Abyss here on my desk. Now, the other decks that I have also been using sort of behind the scenes of um, the Ancestral Grimoire is the Robin Wood Tarot. Now, you will probably recall if you saw the videos on the Ancestral Tarot that I did, because we have the two books by, by um, Nancy Hendrickson. We have the two books by Nancy Hendricks and we have um, Ancestral Tarot and uh, the Ancestral Grimoire. This deck was used predominantly in the Ancestral Tarot. However, for me, when I want to speak quietly or personally with my ancestors, um, under the realms of the project, but also outside of that, this deck really fits the bill for me. It comes from probably the name my this is the Robin Wood, but my father, okay, was an avid lover of Robin Hood, and it just seemed to fit. And ever since I've chosen to use it, it's been, it's been a, a great communicator. So when I'm doing the tasks and the spreads and the readings within the ancestral grimoire, I use these. When I want to clarify anything or ask further questions outside of that remit I use this deck because it just is brilliant look at this isn't that a beautiful card for our ace of pentacles it's absolutely stunning I love the color I love the images look now now this screams ancestral as well Look at this here. Now, if you take a quick glance at that, you'd say, oh, it's one person in a boat that looks like a swan carrying them off. But look very closely and in the fine line work here, you will see somebody else guiding. So how would you pick that up as, for me, that's our spirit guides or our ancestors, people watching over us from beyond the veil who are guiding and steering our way although we might not be aware of it at the time, we look back and we think, how did we manage to do that? Because we had that little bit of a push. Okay, so it serves us well to now and again, just to stop and think and say, thank you for that. I need that little bit of a boost at that time. So that is why the Robin Wood is in the working deck section. And then I have the Bright Future Tarot. And the reason this is here is because sometimes if I'm asking a question, 
and this would not be one that I would use to communicate with the ancestors, it's that one there. If I'm sort of questioning something and making comparisons between today and yesteryear, this is a very modern deck and this this seems to be one that would clarify simple questions that I don't necessarily need to rely on my ancestors for as such, but look at things from a more modern viewpoint um from a well how does that compare to x y and z in the past you know i just find that having something there that we can use from that sort of represents today as we as as we see it you know and it's a lovely lovely deck it's um a glorious deck actually and again a lovely reader one of my favourite cards in this is the High Priestess, the Strength card. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? But this was this was created by Saskia Lee. And um, I was very, very lucky because I did a review of this deck and also mentioned during that review that there was a second deck of this, of this, um, of, of the, the Bright Future, but it had keywords on it and that I my intention was to... Um, purchase that uh, at another time and Saskia saw the review and very kindly sent me the the second deck which I actually have sitting right there I love that that's one of my really favorite cards in this deck there we go. you can see the color the beauty the whole vibe from this is one of a good energy um, fresh energy and also one that guides us in today's world but why is it with my ancestral stuff because sometimes we have to mix the new with the old to get a balanced view of things I also fell in love with this because for me that the hanged man is our spaceman but the, the, the cord that is life cord spells the name Joe and Joe is my son's name so that was something else that uh, that made me choose this card now this is it the high priestess otherwise known as the oracle here look at that isn't that gorgeous isn't that just amazing so and I love the hermit do not disturb So that's a, 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 you know a few reasons why this deck is on my um, in my work current working pile. Am I using all four of these for this current project? Yes, I am, for different levels and whatever you know. Those for the actual book work. These, this one, this one here, and this one in my hands now. The bright future for more of a one-to-one -one outside the actual book work that I do and I keep my little card stand there because sometimes I'll pull a card and I think I need to look at that today that needs to be in front of my face so there's that there then I have the oracle decks that I'm using in this are the sacred forest oracle and the celtic moon again for the earthiness and our links to nature and because of the celtic links I have in my own life we then have, just pop this over there for a minute, these decks here that are on my desk. Now, why are these decks on my desk? So you can see here a little two-tiered tray that holds the, the cards here. Now, these are decks that do swap around. I do sometimes interchange them from decks from the rest of my collection. But I love reaching for this one. This is one that I reach for on a regular basis, the tarot at the end of the rainbow, because I just feel it's, it's you know, again, I'm obsessed with the Celtic links, but it also has, you know, the words of the, the, the fairy folk and the little people. And sometimes, you know, they, they are quite liable to give us the... the up the backside that we need because they're as my friend very recently told me they're not people to be messed with she's a great believer in the fae as are we all to some degree but she really is a great believer in the fae and in fact 
when we were I was talking about the Tower of the Abyss, and if you recall, I've mentioned it in many videos where I had intention intentionally taken it with me on one of my forays into the woods to review the deck outdoors because it just had that real earthly pull. And every time I took the deck out, the wind ro rose and blew up and she said to me, those were the Fae telling you, don't open them here. This is not the place to do that. And so I brought them home. <laughs> I thought, hmm, she has a point. And here you can see there's a lot of vibrancy, a lot of colour. There's um, The rainbow um, comes across in every card. So if you look here, it's in the wings of our knight here. Let's see. And it's that's uh, sorry. Is that our, no, that's sorry. That's our king, our king of swords. And here it's on the armbands of that little little person there. <clears throat> and then we go on. The butterflies around the tree. So you can see in the wings of the wheel of fortune. It's just a lovely deck. It's, it's it's one that I like to reach out to. And, you know, it's also, you know, on, at times you're not feeling the best and you, you just want that bright pop of colour and that little fey person to say, do you know something, things are going to be OK. You just need to um, cop yourself on, you know. Because <coughs> as colourful as they are, they're not that gentle. Believe you me, they're not that gentle. I then have the Broke broke Bitch um, Tarot deck. Why is this one here? This is this is here. This is, was um, created by um, uh, the, the, just bear with me, let me get the names off here because um, they're not easy to read, by Kat um, Dering and by Taryn Masterson. Kat Dering and Tara Masterson. This was bought and it sits here waiting for the occasion. What occasion, you may ask? Well, I bought two decks of this, of this, um, two, two copies of this deck. One for myself and one for my youngest son who has an interest in tarot. And I thought, right, the reason I got this, because they're just a nice size to be able to carry around with you. They're sort of poker sized and they have keywords on the card. Now I'm not a lover of keywords on a card but for this one it just seemed quite different. It seemed unique and very very user friendly. It's a beautiful beautiful simply simplistic deck that I thought would be great for my son to start reading with. But as happens life gets in the way. He's now living with his partner settled down in a good job and happy and tarot has been put on the back burner pretty much like it was with me at that age but I do believe that will come back and when it does this deck will be waiting to be used so that whether he asks for my assistance I've got the same deck as he has and we can work through it together so it's sitting there waiting to be used and um, it will be it's just a matter of time as to when so if you look at the, the writing on here we've got um, the positive and the negative. So there we have our king of coins and the positive up in the corner, grounded, successful business empire. And underneath it says corrupt, greedy and materialistic. So those are the sort of key words that are on there for um, people beginning. So I think if you want, don't want to sort of learn from the traditional sort of RWS um, images, that those are sort of more modern images, hand-drawn sketches that say a lot. Um, we have the, right, we have the Dreaming Way Tarot. This is another deck that is one that I reach out for when I'm asking serious questions for me, for myself. And um, it, that could be whether it's to do with my life, my work, my hobbies and interests, my health in general, all this sort of thing. If I'm feeling a bit cruddy, why? It just seems to give me that, I don't know, it's, it, it's, I, I, it's just lovely because what I like about it is one particular card, say this one here, the Nine of Cups. Now you know Nine of Cups, we're supposed to sort of have everything sorted, everything in a row. 
everything is fine. But then, you know, we get those days, if we look at this character's face, sometimes we might feel like we've got it all. But have we? Are we happy with what we've got? What's missing? What's, what's not putting a smile on our face? And sometimes I do get days like that. And I would be lying if I said I didn't. You know, where people from the outside world might think, oh, you know, Elaine's at home, she's able to do what she wants, she's able to do X, Y and Z, and it might look all all rosy in the garden, but there are days that that rosiness pales into sort of wilted looking, and that's sometimes how one can be made to feel, whether it's just the day that's in it, whether something hasn't gone right, whether something just seems to be missing from from giving us that boost that we should be feeling there you know and it, it can be the slightest of things and it's because we're holding it here and we might not be addressing it or we might be sort of you know pushing our true feelings under under the, a carpet uh, under the mat and um, because they're being ignored they're not being addressed and they tend to grow that does happen, you know, so if you're feeling in any way low or fed up or negative, don't just brush it under the carpet and pass it off as, oh, I'll be all right in a minute. Because when you push the next thing that makes you feel like that under the carpet, it's added to that original one. And that continues until that, oh, I'll be all right in a minute, grows and grows and grows. And that carpet can't hold it anymore and it bursts out in the forms of stress, anxiety, anger, impatience. So address it at the time and say, right, what's causing me to feel like this? Why is it making me feel like this? I have, you've seen me writing in all sorts of journals. I get these little books. My mum got me two of these when they were on sale in the works in Wales. But I have hundreds of little books like this that are filled with whether it's um, work on projects I'm doing, whether it's my own ramblings, whether it's a little bit of poetry that I've written, whether it's me writing my feelings down, whether it's me sort of creating a two columns, good things, bad things, why am I feeling the, this? How can I take this negativity and create it into a positive? Um, I just have found that since retiring and um, out of the rat race, as I was a, a teacher for many years and an engineer before that, and have constantly worked hard and played harder, having a more sedentary life um, has given me the opportunity to be able to analyse what goes on in my thoughts, in my heart, in my feelings in general, um, to analyse my own life as it is now. Because at first I found it very, very difficult to get used to being retired um, because I had this feeling of being put out to pasture very, very early on. And it was a difficult thing to accept. But it was also a big kick in the backside when it comes to ego, because we are all too fond of thinking that without us things could fall apart, that we play an important role in that cog of whether it's industry, education, every, you know, out in the working world. The sad fact is when push comes to shove and for whatever reason that rug has been pulled from under you causing your world to collapse and you are no longer involved in that corporate or educational umbrella, it's like, my God, somebody has just filled my boots just like that. And that's when we realise that we're in, in the working world, no matter whether you are at the top of the pyramid or you are sort of at the, at, the, at the bottom, you know, sort of working your way up. At the end of the day, we're just a number. We're just there to put food on our table to get as far as we can, to feel that success, that achievement, and do continue that. It's really good to have that achievement, but don't let it be your be all and end all because things can do a complete and utter nosedive and it can be hard to pick yourself up dust yourself down and say what now so this is what I do and whenever I feel those sort of mm, moments that's the deck I 
refer to. The other deck here is the Cosmic Cycles Tarot. This I use when reading either for or with younger people. Um, for instance, my nieces, who are both um, very interested in the tarot and who are very lucky to have parents who support their interests and have allowed me to gift them tarot decks and oracle decks. This is an exceptionally modern deck. This portrays different family um, different family lives, single parents. It looks at you can uh, modern day work um, and let's our four of pentacles you know, starting to save in that piggy bank, taking things out, saving for that dream, that big limo there in the background. Our three of pentacles, okay. Our Hierophant. Our Hierophant is taken in all forms of worship and religion and and different ways of doing things, which is so inclusive. The Chariot. Look at the Chariot that we have here. How, how more modern can you get than that? Our King of Cups. Now, our King of Cups is sitting there. He's looking okay. He's just chilling in his room. He's got his salt lamp in the corner, his awards on the walls. He's reached what he needs to do. So he's fairly comfortable rocking in his chair, holding his coffee or milkshake that he has in his hand, you know, and not having too much of a bother because he's he's at the point that it, you know, that he's reached the pinnacle at that point of his life. Death, look at death, all about change, looking in the mirror and making changes to us to our persona, to our looks, looking within, that no, you know, you know, that no longer suits you, you want something different. And that's creating our own change. The devil. Now the devil one here is quite sad because this is, this really is what is, ha what is and has happened in so many people's lives. You know, drink and drugs and just being trapped in that that negative environment, the darkness in the background, the graffiti on the walls, the unkept room and sadness along with an I don't care attitude on others. It's quite a quite a sobering card that is. OK, I won't go through all of them, just giving you an idea. There was one that really stood out to me, and I shall just see if I can quickly find it for you. Um, and it it reminded me of my nieces, of the fun they have, you know, with their friends, going out, girls on the town, so to speak, you know, as they're starting to... What, and here we go, you know, we've got our Queen of Cups here, who's who's a, 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 a nice rounded figure, not some a, a silk-like um, individual, but... Um, there's one particular one, oh there's actually two, I'll show you that one there as well, that sort of stood out to me as, wow, that really does reflect the teenagers and, and the young people of today in comparison to when we were younger. Okay, we did our same, our things, but our lives were quite different to what young people's lives are today. And it's very, very... Um, I don't know if, if I'd be able to, to manage as a young person in today's world. But let's have a look at that one there. Ah, oh, yes. I'm giving you three other cards here that I'm going to show you. Our Fool. Look at that. All the young people when they finish school want to travel, want to jet off. Yes leave home, do their own thing, be their own person, be independent and say, do you know what? I'm going to go for it to hell with the consequences. <laughs> and this, look at this, taking the selfies, drinking their, their coffees to go, looking trendy and just being, you know, in today's modern world. I'm so glad that with there no bloody iPhones and mobile phones when I was growing up. And the High Priestess, look, somebody reading her tarot with her laptop open in front of her, studying tarot, and at the same time on a mobile phone, all the technology around her. It's just lovely. 
So you can see why this deck is here because it really does fit in well with today's youth. And um, I teach tarot on a Saturday morning and this is a deck that I'm going to show the young person that I do teach. Um, unfortunately, I don't think you can get this anymore. I don't know if another one's being created, the Cosmic Cycles Tarot by Martina Razzo. Illustrator is Miriam E.G. Um, I know there was a little bit of a dilemma over people getting the decks, so I'm not sure. I was very lucky, but I had no issues whatsoever, so I don't know what's happening there. I, 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 it's a shame, but I, I think there are, like, the This Might Hurt Tarot would be one that would be useful as well in today's world. I have another deck here, and it's Psycards, okay? Psycards sit on my desk, and let's just have a look here. We have a book that goes with Psycards. Now, what are Psycards? Psycards to me, well, they're not Tarot and they're not Lenormand. They're not an Oracle deck. It's a system. It's a system. And this is the book that goes with that system. Um, and I'm going to read the blurb on the back of this book um, just to give you some sort of idea as to, to what they are. Um, I find these very accurate readers. I like them. I think it's a, it's a very clever system. It does seem to speak a lot. And I think if you wanted to, you could use them on as an oracle. But I'll get back to that in a second. So we have things like the beast. Okay. We have the message. Looking at that, you'd say, oh, that's pretty much like Lenormand. But no, it's actually not peace there. We have friendship. Fortune, going out to seek one's fortune maybe. The sage, the home. And we also have a definitive yes, no card in here. There's our yes. And um, we have money, look at that. Money there. Um, we have prison. Okay, let's see. The puzzle is another one okay what do we have to choose from maybe we have never there's destruction birth skill the tree the inquirer is another one now we have a tower card in this deck but the tower card is completely different to the tower card that you would get in tarot the tower card is all about you building your castle um, being the overseer of what's going on, but you also have to be careful not building up walls between you and other people. You have mother, death, father, fool, son, the wheel, scales, the liar. Look at that. And that's somebody that's uh, not being their true self. Um, liberation work, union, the body, now, the cave. There's our no card. So you can see that it really does have a different vibe about it. Those are the backs on them. Okay, it's only, it's a, a standard size card. Now let's have a look and see what it says about the side cards. The side cards are created by Nick Hobson. And um, the idea of side cards came to Nick Hobson in a dream. Standing on a mountain top, he saw all the elements of his life spread out below him like fields of corn. This experience moved him to create the Psycard system of 40 authoritative cards to help shape life decisions. The cards draw on Jungian psychology, on the mythology, on, sorry, on mythology, poetry and folk wisdom. The book explains the meaning of the cards and their relevance in making key decisions, personal development, counselling, clinical psychotherapy, meditation and relationships. It is the Definite, this is the definitive book on the Psycard system, which has won the allegiance of thousands of people from all over the world. So it's one that you would have to use the book with. You could, if you chose to, say you wanted to pick up a card, so we picked up the beast. So how could we read that intuitively? Well, straight away the word beast, what monsters are you hiding or what monsters are you having to face? What um, difficulties you having to sort of circumnavigate or find a way over, you know, all all that sort of thing. But 
the card itself would have a different, you know, would have its its own meaning. So if we look at the beast here, we've got we've got nearly two and a half pages on it. So call your courage up to slay the foul fiend who bars the way. So we're nearly cl we're close there. It then tells you all about, um, you know, the card itself. And then there's thought prompts. What most frightened you as a child? Can you identify your own personal beast? What sort of ways can you fight the beast? What weaponry do you think is most effective? What person in your life do you most represent with the beast? Mm. So it's it's very, very deep. Now, I've used this deck only on a couple of occasions because I am not that well versed in it, but it's one that I'm learning, one that I enjoy. And something was... was um, that I have to agree with Simon was stating and um, because I, I have Lenormand decks and Lenormand for some reason is a system that I can't gel with for some reason there's a blockage there when it comes to try to even learn Lenormand I've bought books I've got three three I think it's three or four decks of Lenormand cards and um, it's just not happening for me side cards it, it is but um I was listening to Simon and he was saying about using his Lenormand as oracle cards and you know I have to agree when you buy a deck of cards okay it might be for one system or another but that deck becomes yours what energy you put into it and how you read it is your prerogative you know you can take those cards and use them as you will now people that read Lenormand and understand it and read it well would go oh my god Elaine no that's not how you read Lenormand no it's not how you read Lenormand but it's using a Lenormand card and using it as an oracle for it when it prompts any sort of intuitive thoughts and um and any sort of um path of thinking and it's it's um something that I will actually go through and have a look at and in doing that you, you know you're sort of familiarizing yourself to a degree with the card and it does no harm to actually say well you know I'm just going to write down what that card means to me and compare it to what it says in in the Lenormand book about it that might actually be um, a path that might assist me in understanding Lenormand more that's worth a try. Thank you, Simon, for, for, for um, raising that, because I do think it's very important. Another thing that Simon raised that I have to back completely is the use of books. Now, um, I, when I started reading Tarot at the age of 18, which will be... 18... Thirty-nine years ago. Thirty-nine years ago. I had to. Sorry, my my head has gone when it comes to numbers. I used to be like that. Now I have to sort of think them. A sort of chemo brain that's never sort of restored one hundred percent to what it was initially. Um, but thirty-nine years ago, mother of divine God, where has that time gone? But there were no books like we get today, as you can see here. I've books here I've books on my window seals over there I have books to beat the band over here along with more decks and you know the the there was at one point people say oh don't bother with the books throw the books away just read the cards as you will yeah okay I can understand that like I've just said similarly with the Lenormand but a book can absolutely open your mind to even more paths um, when you look at people who have created decks, who have spent their time creating books, and particularly when they are good books that come with a deck, for this, like this one with the Robin Wood, you know, we, we're looking at this. We've got um, books here that I would refer to, and they're on the windowsill over there, that have come with decks over the years. And even though we know that, say, uh, our tarot cards have a sort of base meaning, a baseline meaning. But when you see the thoughts, the intuitive um, works of the creator of the decks, and you look think, my God, I never ever thought of the, say, Seven of Pentacles like that. It gives you another path, another train of thought, but it opens you up to different ways of thinking, different ways of seeing, feeling, hearing, tasting. It's just... 
uh, these are every bit as important as the cards and it's okay to say oh well yeah you know get a set and you know fling the book over your shoulder but you could be flinging away a treasure that can make your readings even deeper even more meaningful to the querent who's coming to you for your sage advice and um it's it's just lovely. It, they're, they're, they're treasure troves. They really are. So when you do get your books, treasure them. Have a read. Make keywords. Now, there are some people that would go mental, but I am an absolute nightmare for some people because I do, depending on the books, I do tend to make notes in margins. I do highlight things. I make my own notes in my books, in my, in my journals. But as you can see from the likes of, I don't know, I mark pages, but then I will highlight them with coloured with coloured highlighters. Have I in this one? I don't know if I have in this one yet. No, I haven't. Um, hold on. I might have at the front here. This is one that's escaped the, 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 my penmanship. But there are books that I am working with on a regular basis that I do make notes in. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to do that. That is your working book. If you are using a book that you're working through on a project with, that, you know, I've even glued stuff in the front of this book, um, that you are, you want to go back and refer to things, don't be afraid to add your own bits to it. You know, it's it's there to be used and it's a sign that it's being used. It's a, OK, you don't want to make signs. Oh, look, I'm using this book. But it's something that you can go back and add your own wisdom or your own questions that you can research later. And just again, add to the richness that is tarot, divination and everything else. Um, the one thing I didn't show you that's in this card holder is this box here. And I'll share with you why this box is here, because this holds a pocket watch that my mum found in my dad's cupboard. My dad passed um, five years ago this year. And it's a watch I had bought him for a Father's Day and had it inscribed that he's the best dad, best father of the year, love Lainey. And there you go. So this, this stays on my desk as a constant reminder that he's with me all day every day um, and I was so grateful when my mum found it <laughs> um, that I have it I have it there right there so it's with me every single day so folks on that note I'm going to love you and leave you I hope you have a lovely Monday I hope whatever comes your way is positive and remember if it's not step back take your hanged man moment Observe what's going on before jumping in with both feet. And then when you've taken your deep breaths and you've gathered your shit together, then go out and burst through the person that's ruined your day. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye bye now.